Section 1.3 is titled Square Roots. Um, what we're going to be doing in this section, we'll go over how to estimate square roots, but then mainly we'll spend the bulk of our time uh, with simplifying square roots. How do we, uh, one, simplify them? How do we then do the operations with square roots, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and then how do we divide square roots by rationalizing the denominator of a radical expression? When estimating a square root without a calculator, um, it's important to have a knowledge of what the perfect squares are. Perfect squares are numbers 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. It's 1 to the second power, 2 to the second, 3 to the second, 4 to the second, 5 to the second power, and then on 6 to the second, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared, etc. So when estimating this square root, the best way to do it is to figure out what two perfect squares does 39 fall between. And 39 would fall between uh, 36 and 49. Now the square root of 36 we know to be 6, the square root of 49 we know to be 7. We want 39, so we could estimate it as some number between 6 and 7, as 39 is between 36 and 49. Uh, now 39 is closer to 36, so I would estimate it as a decimal closer to 6, um, so I would probably guess something like 6.3. Two, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood, but you could check on a calculator to see exactly what it is. Now, most of the time when dealing with square roots or radicals in general, we're not after the decimal approximations for the radical expressions, we're after the exact value, and so we learn how to simplify uh, numbers underneath radicals. And so we begin with this product property for simplifying radicals. It says that if you have a product underneath the radical a times b. That's the same as the product of radicals square root of a times square root of b. It allows us to split one square root into two square roots separately. Um, most of the problems that we do in this particular lesson that involve simplifying radicals will involve this rule right here. On this slide, we see a variety of examples. The directions for all of them are going to be to simplify the radical. And we're going to simplify all of them with the product property that we saw on the last slide. So what we want to do on each one of these problems is rewrite the number underneath the radical as a product of two numbers. So 12 could be rewritten as 4 times 3. Now, the product property says that then that's the same as square root of 4 times square root of 3. And notice that the first radical here, the square root of 4, is a perfect square. So we go ahead and take its square root. The square root of 4 is 2. We leave the square root of 3. So simplified square root of 12 is 2 square root of 3. Next one, square root of 45. Again, I begin with two numbers that multiply to 45. Use 9 times 5. That becomes square root of 9 times square root of 5. The square root of 9 right here is our perfect square. It square roots to 3. And we keep that square root of 5. 3 square root of 5. Okay, next let's come down here to square root of 300. Two numbers that multiply to 300 would be 100 times 3. This becomes square root of 100 times square root of 3, which becomes 10 times the square root of 3. Last one I want to do, the square root of 72, is generally the one that causes students the most trouble. 
uh, and I'll show why. I'll show it two different ways. Um, 72 can be thought of as square root 36 times 2. Square root of 36 times square root of 2. So it's 6 square root of 2. Okay, now that's correct. What I want to show you is what I see a lot of students do on a problem like this or a problem similar to this. Um, I see a lot of this, maybe. 72, a lot of students recognize it as 9 times 8, and it is. It's not wrong to think of it like that. So the 9 is the perfect square, of course. And so the 9 becomes 3, and then we have that square root of 8. And notice these number answers are different. Um, they're both correct, um, just the first one I got is more correct than the second one. And the reason why it's more correct is because 8 itself can be rewritten as a product of two numbers such that one's a perfect square. So I can rework 8 like I've done all these other problems, and that's what I need to do. 8 is 4 times 2. The 4 becomes 2, so I have 3 times 2 square root of 2, which becomes 6 square root of 2. In the end, we get the same thing, uh, but we can see that this technique, it, it just, uh, I needed repeated steps of finding perfect squares to to square root. So if you don't find the largest one, like over here I found 36, if you find smaller perfect squares, it's okay. Sometimes you just have to keep on going. Okay. Adding and subtracting radicals. When you add and subtract radicals, they must be must be like terms. Okay, like terms are radicals that have the same number underneath them. So right now, looking at this problem, we cannot add or subtract these radicals because all the numbers underneath, the 50, the 27, and the 8, they're all different. Okay, um, So what I have to do first is simplify all the radicals like we did on the last slide. Okay, So let me write all those out. Um, 50 25 times 2, 27 is 9 times 3, and 8 is 4 times 2. Okay, so product property says that this is square root of 25 times square root of 2. This one is square root of 9 times square root of 3. This one is square root of 4 times square root of 2. Now, all of these perfect squares can be simplified. Okay, and we'll leave the square root parts behind. So this first one is 5 square root of 2 minus. Uh, now right here, I'm going to just kind of do this all in one step. Notice this 5 is being multiplied to the radical. So whatever this becomes, it multiplies by the 5. So this becomes 3 times this 5 makes 15 square root of 3. Same thing here. This square root of 4 becomes 2. 2 times this 3 makes 6 square root of 2. Okay. Now we can look for the like terms. Okay, like terms are the ones that have the same number underneath the radical. And we just add how many of those we have. We have five of them over here. We have six more over here. If we add them together, we have 11 square root of 2. And then that square root of 3 term just stays as it is. And that's finished. Another property uh, for simplifying radicals that we often use is called quotient property. Similar to the product property, it says that if we have a quotient two numbers under a radical. That's the same as the radical of the numerator divided by the radical of the denominator. We're allowed to split this up into two separate radicals 
Therefore, we can simplify each one uh, individually of the other one. Now, generally speaking, whenever I have a fraction under a radical, the first thing I look for is are either of the numbers underneath the radical perfect squares? Because if they are, then it's best to just split up the fraction and take the square root of the number or numbers. Um, and that's exactly what I'm going to do in this one. I split this up using quotient property. Square root of 36 divided by square root of 49. And then I just take the square roots of these numbers. 36 becomes 6, 49 becomes 7. That's the answer, 6 sevenths. Uh, second one, I look at the numbers underneath the radical 16 and 81 and I recognize those as perfect squares. So I'm going to split this up. 16 square roots to 4, 81 square roots to 9, and that's done. Now the next two examples show a different strategy. When I look at these two, uh, I notice that these are not perfect squares. So splitting up like this will not lead to simplified numbers. Um, but what I look for in this one is can I, can I reduce the fraction? Okay. Well, 3 goes into 75. 3 goes into 75 25 times. Or 75 divided by 3 is 25. Simplifies. And once I simplify or reduce the fraction, it's not a fraction anymore. I just have 25, which square roots to 5, and that's the answer. So the last one, I recognize that I have no perfect squares. Okay. Um, but I do recognize that 80 divides by 5. So what I do is put this back together as one fraction, and then I reduce the fraction. 80 divides by 5 16 times. Square root of 16 is 4.